The Last Word, sponsored by Three Business. Experts in the business of communication. Three, we speak business. Now, some speculation and confusion as to what the Catholic Archbishop of Dublin, Dermot Martin, actually wants emerging from the referendum on marriage equality in May and a so-called conscience clause uh, that would allow certain people to express objections without breaking equality laws. Now, the Sánchez has this afternoon ruled out the so-called conscience clause for opponents of uh, marriage equality. She says she can't see any circumstances where business would still be allowed to discriminate on the basis of their own beliefs. Uh, I suppose this comes down to a lot of wood. We have the similar thing to recently we discussed about uh, the refusal to print uh, by a Drogheda printer who wouldn't print uh, invitations to a civil ceremony on uh, belief religious grounds. We have two guests with us, Colm O'Gorman, Executive Director of Amnesty, and also Keith Mills, spokesman for Mothers and Fathers Matter. That's a new group, Keith, is it? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, we're um, formed, we're a, a, a cross-functional group um, bringing together different people, uh, some of religion, some of not. I'm an agnostic, so I'm coming here in um, without any heavy re- religious baggage as such in, in this issue. And um, we're fighting the... And sorry, are you a parent? No, I'm not, but I'm an uncle... Uh, several times over and obviously I, I had mum and dad as well so I'm reasonably well able to talk about parenting I mean um, you're not isolated from parenting in this country for, for too long because of big families um, but uh, also um, as I said we're a group that came together some secular some religious and um, we're fighting for uh, the rights of mothers and fathers and the keeping of the, the traditional family for mothers and fathers um, in regards to the um, current legislation that's going to the house and also uh, the redefinition of marriage and potentially well, surrogacy you, as well. What way do you believe their rights have been impinged? Well, if we redefine marriage um, through the referendum in May, uh, the state will no longer be able to give preference to a family unit that can provide a child with mother and father when it comes to things like adoption or fostering or adust, um, um, assisted uh, human reproduction. So we believe, and obviously the public do as well, because every poll has shown 60 to 90 percent that. Uh, the public favour a family unit that can provide a mother and father. Uh, we believe that mothers and fathers matter. Where, where were those polls taken? They were commissioned. That they were both conducted by a Moroc, and they were commissioned by two different organisations. Those organisations, remember they take. I remember one of them was actually Iona, but I, the commissioning organisations really have a secondary here because they're Amorica, a, a reputable, reputable company, and Iona was one, and I think it was a housing organisation that was involved in the second one. When were they done? They were done. One was published about a month ago, and one was published, I believe, at the turn of the year. And one was sixty percent, and one was ninety yeah, percent. Well, yeah, yeah, different questions slightly asked. One was, do you believe uh, a, a child does better? And one, do you believe a, a child does better? Or you know, um, semantical differences. But that's always the way that you get it. I think one was sixty-five percent, and one was ninety-two percent, as I recall. And that they always do better when a mother and father are that, present, that, is it? Yeah, that people believed that children did best with a mother and father. Colm O'Gorman, as the parent, as a gay man in a relationship and as a parent of children, how do you feel when you hear that children do better with mothers and fathers than they do with two fathers? I think children do best in circumstances in which they're loved, in which they're secure and I think in which their needs are met. Uh, and that's what all uh, of the scientific research tells us, all of the valid scientific research uh, a whole body of research indeed that uh, Cambridge University carried out uh, released a, a review of 30 years of research uh, just last month which is the latest review of all of the research to find exactly that fact but you know I suppose I thought we were coming here to discuss the oh, we question of, time. Of, of, time. of the so called conscience clause or, or as we should more accurately call it discrimination clause that people want inserted into our laws um, but you know just yeah, to just to, just to, yeah, okay, just to very quickly point. just to very quickly debunk one thing uh, um Our current laws on adoption and on children's rights do not favour any particular family type. What they say is that the child's best interests in each and every particular case should be at the heart of every decision that's made about the care, custody or well-being of that child. There is no favouring of a family type, nor should there be. Our adoption laws, our child custody laws, our child protection laws should be focused principally and primarily and absolutely on the rights and best interests of every particular child. This conscience clause, what do you understand by it, Keith Mills? 
Um, well, as, as I understand, I just want to debunk this as, as Colin got a chance to reply to my point. I just want to reply to his as well, please. First of all, the research is that, that he's quoting is inconclusive. It's a series of small polls, none of which are scientifically it really valid. Isn't Keith, but we can debate this another time, okay. maybe. And, and the other thing is, I'm not disputing, mean, this is not an attack on Colin in any way. I think uh, a father can pr- provide, uh, a, a man can provide to be a good father to a child, irrespective of um, orientation. But I don't think two men can provide a child with a good mother. And that's my, my, my stance on the issue. Now, two, in terms I of think, the conscience. Two Close. men can provide a child with a loving, nurturing, wonderful environment in which they are cared for, nurtured and valued. Uh, that's what I said. I didn't say that a, a, a man, a father could replace a mother. Clearly, that's not the case. OK, well, I, t- I agree that I think the mother is ver- very important. Now, let's that. talk about conscience. Yes, let's do. No. What's in your terms understanding of the conscience, well, I was the conscience actually, clause? Rather bizarrely, I was actually at the, at the, at the, con- the uh, Archbishop's um, address the other night. I it was, was in, an Iona Institute. It was, function, yeah, I was, was there. It? Because I, the reason why I was there is um, I got invited by the Iona Institute because um, I've met David Quinn and he told me that the Archbishop was going to be talking about the family and that it might be something that I might find interesting from a religious perspective. Even as perspective. an atheist. Even as an atheist. But you, you've got to remember that a million people go to church every 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 day in, or every week in this country. So, I mean, as much as other people would like to sideline this and would like to make a split between civil and, and religious marriage, there isn't really one because 70% of uh, civil marriages are conducted by priests in this country. So we, un, unlike any other country, Country where marriage has been redefined to include same-sex marriage, we have a very, very high element of seeing marriage as a sacrament and a spiritual element more than just as a civil ceremony. Oh, actually, does that mean that we need to actually change things a little bit? Because surely a civil marriage is different to religious marriage. There are many people who have a civil marriage who wouldn't see themselves as religious. Why would you conflate the two? Aren't they two different things? Well, th- th- my, in my opinion, that's a, where we could actually be heading if, if this um, the, uh, referendum was to pass in May. I was listening, as I said, to the Archbishop and uh, he mentioned many, many things in relation to the family and he provided great support for mothers and fathers at the address. But he did mention that there is a clause in the legislation that says that uh, people who solemnise the, 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 the churches, um, who, who uh, work as solemnisers in, uh, for civil marriages, um, are getting an exemption in the law if same if same sex marriage becomes law, but and he made a very very valid point is that he believes that church people, the priests and bishops and archbishops and cardinals, are not the only people with religious beliefs, and that if he was being given an exception, surely other people of religious beliefs should also be given an exception, and. I have to say, I, I understand where he's coming from. So I you're would, saying that in a lay ceremony, if a civil state ceremony, if somebody decided they didn't want to marry two gay people, that they should be allowed not to do so? No, no, no. The priests have been given that exemption. Yeah, but for those who are conducting a civil ceremony, should uh, in, they be given that exemption? No, I don't believe they should because they are working okay. for the state. So th- there will be two exceptions that I would see. If you are working for the state, then I think you are duty bound to follow the, the laws of the state, even if they get redefined. I think it w- may put people in an awkward position, but I do believe that uh, as you, as your employer has changed the ethos, that you should respect that. And the other situation I would I would have uh, sympathy uh, with is if um, a, a company uh, uh, with, with opting out of a conscience clause is if a company has a monopoly of, of, of a certain business. I think they well, should let's just take the example of a printer. If a printer refused to print up a wedding invitation for a gay couple, should they be done for discrimination? No, not if there are other printers that can do the job. Colm O'Gorman. Well, first of all, I think it's important to recognise that whilst, and I would welcome Keith's comments about the obligations on employees of the state to carry out their lawful duties uh, in line with the law, I think that's valuable. Uh, It's worth noting, though, that those who are arguing for a conscience clause, most notably David Quinn of the Iron Institute, have consistently argued for a conscience clause for uh, civil marriage registrars. He did it in the context of civil partnership bill, and I understand that's probably still his position. The question as to whether or not we can uh, grant a conscience clause in other words, grant a discrimination clause that would permit people to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation and the provision of goods and services, I think is deeply, deeply flawed. I mean, where do we stop? At at what point do we allow religious conviction? uh, um, uh, You know, where's the limit of allowing religious conviction to bar people from being able to access public goods and services? So, for instance, should we say that driving instructors whose religion uh, um, uh, leads them to believe deeply held conviction, their religion leads to believe that women should not be allowed to drive cars should they be permitted not to provide driving lessons to women, not to sell petrol to women, not to sell cars to women not to provide uh, motor insurance to women, should people who believe for instance uh, uh, that uh, uh, divorces 
that divorced people getting married in, in, uh, in a civil marriage is contrary to their religious conviction? Should they be allowed to refuse public goods or services uh, to, to, to people on the basis of their deeply held religious conviction? Actually, if you want to protect freedom of religion and belief, and it's an incredibly important human right, a hugely important one, uh, you must ensure that you have a robust anti-discrimination framework within your country. I mean, there's a really interesting quote that somebody sent me today from William Butler Yeats when he was speaking in the Shannon, actually on a debate on divorce. So again, marriage related in June of 1925, where he said, once you attempt legislation upon religious grounds, you open the way for every kind of religious intolerance and every kind of religious persecution. Yeah. Well, Keith, I, I think it's well known that Yeats was a great poet but a very bad politician. Um, so, you disagree uh, with that view then? No, I don't. I, I do disagree with that view. And, 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 but, uh, but I, the one point I will make to you, you mentioned their discrimination against women. You're a gay man and I'm a gay man. I've gone to, to um, men only nights in gay clubs and gay pubs in this country where women were not allowed. Well, well, right then. With my personal choice, I don't actually like to go to spaces that exclude anybody on the basis right. of their gender. If you do, that's a matter of fact. All right. All right. But, but do you understand that that's done and that's, that's a common practice within in the gay community? I see. I mean, you might, might paint that as discrimination. I wouldn't. Uh, for me, that's creating um, um, a space, it's a, it's a, a safe somewhat, space. It's a, it's no, a, it's a safe it's a, space, a, Colm. I didn't a, interrupt you. It's a Colm, it's a safe space. Sure, yeah. it, it, um, it's, it's creating a safe space for people who are gay. And in that sense, yes, it possibly is discrimination, but it creates... And I think there should be a space, safe space based on orientation and for religious beliefs. But I said there are some exceptions on this in terms of state employees and monopolies, but I see no problem for a company saying, sorry... We don't. Uh, we believe in a mother and a father. We believe that marriage is one woman and one man, and therefore we believe but we can't if, believe what, we can't say, provide you with a service. What if that business decided they didn't want to serve black people? That's totally different. I mean, why is it totally different? Because, because you're because saying you're, you're saying it's okay. You're saying it's totally wrong to exclude somebody on the basis of race, but you're saying it's all right to exclude somebody on the basis of their sexuality. Think of what you're saying there, Matt. You're saying that people who believe that a, a marriage is a man and a woman are equivalent to being racists? Is that how we're going no, to read? Well, I that, asked you fairness, specific, no, no, that's, no, you're, that check, the, you're drawing, I asked you a specific question. Well, that's the inference of what you're saying. Well, let's put it in a it. different way then. So if somebody believes, use the example that I use there, Keith, if somebody believes, and we know this is a, t- is, is a tenant of a particular interpretation of some world religion, some of the largest religions in the world. All of which if so, believe if, if, man and woman marriage. If, yes. if, if someone believes that it is against their religion to allow a woman to drive a car, do you think in Irish law their religious conviction should be allowed them to discriminate, to refuse to, to provide that woman with goods or services related to the driving of a car? No, because I... But will, why? Because a man and a woman are equal. No, 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 but that's, that's your view. But you're now, you're now disagreeing with the deeply held religious conviction of somebody who believes that a woman should not be permitted to drive a car and that's their deeply held religious conviction. Uh, as I said, it would, it would vary depending on, what, on the circumstances. If they so, were, no, if, so if, it varies, example, it varies no, depending if, upon what you no, no, believe, no, but no, not no, what other people no, believe. I, I've outlined my, 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 where I am on this thing. If, there's, if they are in the owners of a monopoly and they are the only person that can provide petrol in a neighbourhood, then I think they... Okay, the, the, well, the, now, if on the I other hand they can I, say, sorry, 500 yards down the road there's another petrol station, you can go so to that So you're saying it's OK then for that petrol station to refuse to serve a woman because the petrol station owner believes women shouldn't be driving cars? I'd, I wouldn't hire somebody who did that. Let's put it that way. If you, I, that's I wouldn't not hire somebody who did that. That's not here. That's, that's, not, the, that's not where that's you would extension. hire them. Sorry, Colin. Sorry. That's not the issue whether you would hire them. You're saying it would be OK for a petrol store owner to not serve a woman because he believed a woman shouldn't be driving a car. No, no I wouldn't, but because I believe a man and a woman are equal and but, therefore... But if you, right, if I'm going to have to call a halt because mm, we've okay. gone way over the time mm. that we had. Uh, Keith Mills from Mothers and Fathers Matter and Colm O'Gorman of Amnesty. Thank you both very much for joining us. Uh, five minutes past the time it should be. It's uh, 25 to 6, so let's have the news headlines with Susan Kyo.